Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today is a different video and um, yeah, I would like to introduce to you a new contraption and a new test that's going to be now a part of the testing lineup for all of the devices that I'm checking out on the my deep guide platform. As probably a lot of you are aware, last year I developed this machine thing that accurately or quite accurately measures the latency, writing latency on different devices and I call it the desktop. So um, yeah, I'm incredibly happy and actually proud of Desta because over the time um, it confirmed the results of the yeah factory testing and lab testing, which is really cool. And even more so when I talk to the yeah producers or manufacturers of the devices, they also reference to it and some of its results, which really makes me happy. The reason why I actually developed Desta was because I wanted to quantify that writing experience thing and because the writing experience kind of boils down into several different things. One of the most obvious ones was actually the writing speed or the latency, right? So I made Desta. But after that one, closely after writing speed, the thing that also does matter to me quite a bit is that distance between the tip of your pen or the nib and where the writing surface actually is, or the screen, so to speak. So basically, what's the thickness of the, uh, the obstruction between the tip of the pen and where your drawing appears? In different devices, that's gonna be a different thing. It's gonna be glass or a screen protector or a film foil or a combination of many things. But either way, it does vary from device to device. And uh, for the longest time, I didn't have, or I couldn't think of, of a good way to accurately actually measure this because we're talking about fractions of a millimeter, right? And there's like, and it's a thickness kind of thing. I can't disassemble the device, etc., etc. And yeah, I've been toying around with the, with the thought processes in my head until I actually came up with a new device that does precisely that. All right, so here is the latest contraption. In this case, I'm having my Remarkable 2 in it. And basically, I have my phone, which is shining its light, always at the same exact place. That's a very, very important part. And also that this little toothpick is always at the same exact place place in relation to each other. Then we have this uh, one millimeter real world unit uh, template equipped on each of the devices. And as you can see, uh, there's like this slot down here where the light first hits. And then we have the toothpick. The idea of that is that I can always set up the straightness of the toothpick in relation to this one. As you can see the shadows. So this is off. This is off and basically this is good. So then I make sure that this little guy is smack in one of the lines. It's now not smack in one of the lines because I'm trying to do it with two hands and it's not super precise. However, something like this. It's much more precise when the camera is mounted and I don't have to do it like hand. So yeah around here all right when it's actually all the photographs are taken from the same exact angle for every single device that's also set up that you can see and then you can see that we're using using this one millimeter grid we can see that for example on remarkable 2 the distance is less than one millimeter so then i take a photo and in photoshop i superimpose a grid on top to actually see which fraction of a millimeter it is to kind of further give it more details. So that's the new device. So once I had it actually functioning properly and uh, established testing methodology so that every time it's actually consistent, the same, same condition, same everything. Um, yeah, then I got to work and I put my existing devices that I have currently with me onto the test bed to actually see what results do we get. So I've tested Remarkable 1, Remarkable 2. 
uh, Books Nova 2, Books Note Air, uh, Super Note A6, A6X and A5X. So those are the devices that I currently have and that I could test at the moment. And the results were in line of what I was actually expecting and definitely confirmed some of the data that I think was important because that was also an important factor for me to know that actually what I'm getting is somewhat accurate. So the test consists out of me taking uh, zoomed in photos of where the needle or the needle point uh, sits and where the shadow is in relation to it. And I'm using that one millimeter by one millimeter grid to actually measure out what is that gap or the shadow distance or what's the height, right? Bigger the distance between the tip or the line where the tip is touching and the shadow itself, or the tip of the shadow, that is actually the thickness of the obstruction, so to speak. Speak. So this is how the original images actually look like when it's zoomed in and kind of cropped in so that it works and you'll see this little uh, kind of grid uh, with lines and that's basically the fractions of a millimeter so I can measure if, if it's 0 0.1, 0 0.15 millimeters etc etc. However when I'm actually doing the readouts I process the image so that I can invert it and then adjust the levels so you can have better clarity over the shadow and the yeah the the tip itself as you can see here so i just wanted to explain like why is it weirdly colored so that i can read the values better and now on to the results uh, predictably note air and nova 2 have pretty much the largest distance, which is that one millimeter distance that they even talked about uh, that it added for Note Air. Mostly it's because of the front light. All of the devices that have a front light and a vacuum layer on top, uh, it's just the way it is. So it, it will be a one millimeter mainly because of that light. Uh, one thing that is important to note here, as you can see, Note Air is 1.1 millimeter, but that is because um, I also also have that uh, screen protector applied which is 0.14 millimeters I think so I guess the note air is around 0.95 millimeters but roughly around one then we have the super note series and they all scored exactly the same so a5x a6x and a6 they obviously are using the same exact uh, soft film uh, screen protector there, patented thingy, and that's the same thickness regardless of the format size. And that measures at 0.9 millimeters. Lower than uh, Note Air, but definitely not as low as the impression that I got. So, so I think it has to do with the very good calibration process that they're doing at uh, Rata or with the Super Note, because you really don't get that perception of being disconnected from the surface that you're writing on as you do on the books devices, for example. So that was definitely a surprise for me to see. Then we have the Remarkable One at 0.55 millimeters. So half the distance of the books devices. And that's definitely something that you feel because that's uh, that was a consistent thing for me whenever I was writing with Remarkable, that it's the, the, that the closeness to the writing surface was very, very good. And Remarkable 2 is at around 0.5 millimeters. Now, I don't know if it's 55 or 5. I don't have that precision yet, but let's say that both Remarkable 1 and 2 are at 0.5 millimeters distance from the uh, tip and the screen, which is quite, quite good. However, um, when I was testing Quark Logic Paper for the very first time before this test uh, even came, you will see that in the in-depth uh, review, I was just saying that one thing that really struck me was how close to the surface you are when you're actually writing and it feels like you're writing on the act on the surface itself like you're writing on a paper and no other device actually gives me that much of an impression like the quirk logic paper does and sure enough the test actually confirmed this and i had to rerun it several times because at first i couldn't believe that this was the result and that I, I was definitely sure that I screwed up something, but nope, I ran it five times, five different angles, five different everything, always exactly the same, which is first of all, great. The machine produces consistent results, excellent. But more so importantly, the, the distance uh, with Quark Logic Paper is 0 0.015 millimeters, maybe even lower, but let's say 0 0.015 millimeters. That is absolutely insane. So yeah, that subjective impression that I had that it felt unbelievably close and that as if you're writing on the surface, now it's confirmed. 
I'm very, very happy that I finally have another test bed or a test device that I can use to quantify this subjective thing and to objectify it, right? That writing experience, elusive thingy. So my deep guide now has two original tests that are designed to quantify and objectify the writing experience on e-ink devices or any other device for that matter. Goody. Now this test bed doesn't have a name yet. I haven't even personified it yet. It doesn't, it's not like desktop that it has a face and everything. So that will come. I don't have a clear vision yet, but it will be personified. And once it does, then I'll have a name for it as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when new videos on my deep guide are coming out. Thank you so much for the support. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.